<laughs> we got another surprise package here. This vintage Daytona. Great the working strap. man's watch. We are closing in on a sales manager. We do not wear consignment watches. This thing is full of these stickers. Either you love it or you hate it. It's the gateway drug. <laughs> Sitting in the Rolex junkyard. I bought the watch. It has two Rolex papers. We're preparing for the holidays. I have two grabs launch at 2.30. Funny seeing you here. What's up everybody? We are currently building out our reef tank for the watch business. I was actually in the uh, reef tank business briefly. So I used to do maintenance and installs and so forth. So I kind of learned a thing or two in that industry, but it's kind of another addictive, expensive hobby that consumes a lot of my time. But we just got this red reef. Um, so we're building it out. It's a 160 gallon display, 200 gallon total displacement of water with the sump system. First thing is get the rock in, then you put the sand down, then you get the water in, and then you get the system plumbed, which is obviously we're gonna do that simultaneously. But now we're just trying to figure out what rock stack looks best. When you're building out rock stacks, I know this isn't really watch related, but it's kind of something fun. You're typically looking to build cave systems. You want peaks and valleys in your rock, you know, so you kind of want to build out nooks and crevices and so forth. That's kind of what we're going for today. So if you guys have suggestions below what type of fish you want to see in here. Now keep in mind, this is a reef tank, so it will have to be what we call reef safe. So we don't want any crazy nitro triggers in here, you know, causing havoc to the corals and causing havoc to the smaller invertebrates and all that other stuff. Shout out to uh, all my fellow reefers out there. We got another surprise package here. Well, I wouldn't say it's a surprise, but uh, if you guys remember, there was a client that gave us 25 watches and with expectation they were gonna give us 100 more. Well, we sold all 25 of his watches. We were getting 50 more this week. Trent actually flew out to California to help him get all the watches, the boxes, everything prepared. We're gonna have an armed service go out there to pick up those watches, bring it back. But we've been getting in so many watches and selling so many watches that we actually needed another display case. So here is gonna be our fifth display case. I actually just met with another company today to talk about the longer term vision. They specialize in doing display cases. They do watch trays and boxes and gift bags and all of the things that a typical watch jeweler might need for their everyday course of business. So we talked about design, some fabrics and all, everything like that. But for now, this is another display case, our fifth display case, because we're getting 50 more watches in from that one client this week. Yeah. Tired? The deep breathing. Disregard that. Back in, back in. Can't even see him. <laughs> it just looks like it's floating out. For Update, guys. I bought the watch. Took hands and everything. I'm on my third strap, and I think that now it's not the watch that I am having issues with because I love the watch. It's just finding the right combination. Hey, we're of strap. So I went from a the original orange strap that was on here, which Marco now took. I went to a so black strap. That's what I'm working with. This is a 1680. That's a 68,000. So four digit, six digit, and eh, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so I went so, from this strap. Whoa, look how dirty you do. It's, it's supposed to get dirty, man. It's like a rough hide strap, you know. Gray it's a working strap. man's watch, bro. Look what I've been doing all day. Putting a fish tank together? Yeah, well, now it's been completely. <laughs> what happened? You just abandoned me. I what didn't happened? abandon you. Why are we taking the rocks apart? Yeah, what the hell? I know. Tommy decided he wants to do his own thing. <laughs> I thought you were doing the rock. I was, and then he went in there. And you said I'm walking away. That doesn't mean you undo everything, right? <laughs> it was ready to go. I went from this that strap to a black yeah. strap to a gray strap to the bracelet, now to this brown strap, and it's starting to get it's you starting to get your, there. You need your patina to hit that color. Will it hit that color? Eventually. Like when I'm dead. No. Marco technique. Hey, dude, I thought I didn't want... No, no, no. Two. You have a crowbar? Nope. You have a hammer, Jimmy? We could use the claw the claw uh, end of a hammer. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Hammer time! Yours is better. Just opening a box. In this week's episode, what, what do we Let call us this? display. Our office is pretty jacked right now because... Funny, we're making a huge mess just to display more stuff, so... We're displaying corals. We sell corals online. Go to grandcorals.com. It's a subsidiary of Grand Caliber. I have a friend who might want to do it with me, right? Is there a friend that wants to do a coral shop or what? Is that plan B? <laughs> That's not plan B. So guys, I just wanted to announce my super special purchase that Marco let me actually buy off of his personal collection. This vintage Daytona. Now I am not gonna say how long I'm gonna keep this thing because every time I do that, I end up finding a new watch that I like more. So, <laughs> but I do have some special surprises for this watch and then maybe me and Marco can sit down and, and talk about it, but he gave me a 
and sick deal on this watch. And this gray strap makes it look amazing. All right, so the big moment, we are putting water in our baby, our fish tank that we just got for Grand Caliber. Okay, so <laughs> this is the funnest part. We're gonna probably have to get about three more of these jugs. We're gonna get the walls really wet today. What's going on guys? I got a few things I wanna show you guys today during showroom showcase. First one is one of the ones that you don't really see it a ton. I don't know why it doesn't get talked about more. Either you love it or you hate it. I personally love it. It is the Rolex Yachtmaster, the 126655. This is the Pave dial, so that's all factory, 40 millimeter in rose gold. We are currently selling this for 46,500. Either you love it or you hate it. Like I said, I personally do love it. The only thing I would change is where it says Yachtmaster on the dial. I wish that was taken off and it was just more flush with the diamonds. But I mean, it's a nitpick thing. But yeah, great piece. Let us know what you think. Let's move on to the next one. So this is a piece that I think everyone should obtain in their uh, collection. The Rolex 126334. So it's the date just, obviously on Jubilee. The cool thing about Jubilee is it's so iconic with Rolex. So whenever you're out to dinner or anything like that and uh, you see a Jubilee bracelet, obviously you know it's Rolex. It's one of the most iconic bracelets you can see. This and the presidential, kind of in a league of their own. So black dial, honestly, I prefer. That or the white dial. I know the blue dial gets the most money and it's the most popular, but I think the black dial dresses a little bit better. You can take this to a wedding or you can do yard work in one of these date chests. So let us know what you think. I think this is a piece that everyone should have just because it is just so easily uh, worn, dressed up or dressed down. Condition of this is it is actually brand new. It's a 1221, so December 2021. And then we're selling this for 11,800. I don't think by the time this video gets out, we'll still have this, but if it is, it's a steal at 11.8. So here's another really cool piece. When it first got launched, it was very controversial just because it kind of, you can get the where it got its design influence from. But this is the Bell & Ross, the BR05. So this is the one on a rubber strap with the blue dial. So obviously you can see a little bit of the AP, a little bit of the paddock in there, but it's really a cool piece. A nice uh, watch that is just a, a watch. You know, there's no real tool function other than the time and the date. So it's a really nice piece to kind of just wear. This is currently for $4,500 and this will get you a brand new piece. This is a 2021, never been worn. Let us know what you think. Um, I personally always like it. I think it's a really cool piece. Um, at 40 millimeters, it just fits really well on the wrist. Right, so this is a piece that just about everybody who's getting into luxury watches will know. It's a true icon of its own, the Black Bay 58. So 39 millimeters. Unlike the normal Black Bay, uh, this one is a little thinner a case as far as the, the thickness of it. So I think it sits a little better on the wrist. Personally, I would go with this. But we have this actually for 3,500. I would go with the blue one just because I think everybody who gets a Black Bay 58 eventually upgrades into a Rolex or a different type of watch. And the blue one will always make you want to come back and wear it. But if you get like a Submariner or something and it's black, you're going to forget about your Black Red 58. Honestly, the Rolex does kind of step above. So usually when people own this and a sub, they typically wear the sub most often and we're getting these as trade-ins. So I would go with the blue one. I think I'll let you keep up for a little bit longer. But yeah, this is a great piece. At 3,500, you're getting a very, very great entry-level um, luxury piece. Next week, we have a lot of heavy hitters rolling through. So I would definitely stay tuned for that. But let us know what you think of this week. If you're to take one of these pieces and keep it forever, which one would it be? Most people probably can choose that. What are you gonna take? I gotta know. Other than that, stay tuned for the next one. What you got in there? I have a cookie that I'm not really happy about. I haven't tried it. I just, I, I'm told it's like a vegan cookie. So I'm very skeptical. I got three phones. I don't know what to do with three phones. Actually, I'll make the announcement now. I think in the last video, I talked about how there's going to be some changes with personnel. As of today is November 1st, Eric is actually no longer a part of Grand Caliber. We wish him very well. He has a new venture that he's going to focus on. We now have Jai... Marco, Alfred, and Vic. They're still the four sales rep. We are closing in on a sales manager, which I think is by far the most important role that this company can hire for. And it's very tricky because the person that takes on that role is crucial to the growth of the company, but you also need someone that can manage the personalities in that room and make sure that people are gelling and also developing them. So we've had a particular person that we've kind of circled. Uh, we've been trying to recruit them for a couple of months and I think we're close. There's actually gonna be another person leaving in about a month. They're gonna be part of the operations team or they are part of the operations team. They're gonna be leaving, but we're gonna be bringing in new faces as well. What I have in store, what's up? You wanna grab lunch? 
Bro, I just had lunch. Who grabs lunch at 2.30 p.m.? I've been working my ass off, sir. I'm not saying you haven't been working your ass That's off. That's who grabs lunch at 2.30. People who work through the whole morning. And I didn't have breakfast today. The whole morning. I didn't have breakfast today. All right, so this is a test. And just disregard my messy screen. Yeah. Hold on, they're going to comment on it. So this is a test of our new website. This is still the demo phase. This is going to launch soon. But so now when you go. Credit card, crypto, you can do transfer cash. Yeah, there's two options for payment. If you do credit card and crypto, you'll see that they'll add the merchant service fee. Okay. So now you're seeing the full, from an SEO standpoint, you're seeing the actual price of the watch. Let's just say, hey, you wanna pay via cash or wire transfer instead. Right. You click this little button and then it's gonna remove the, the fee, the merchant service mm -hmm. fee, but then it's gonna allow someone to make a deposit of $2,000 and then immediately you'll get a wire instructions with the remaining balance. You only get the wire instructions if you make a deposit. Correct. You have to pay a deposit, a barrier to entry, so no one can go onto our website and just remove all of our inventory. Not only that, but steal our wire instructions for free. Exactly. And become, you know, well, which is why put we, us in a fraudulent mess. Which is why we have an incoming account that gets swept over. You can even put Marco Nicolini as your sailor up here. Ten. Always put Marco Nicolini Boom. as your sales rep. Boom. Every time. Every time. This is the new uh, website process. Eh? Yeah. I love it, man. It's awesome. That looks mm -hmm. really good. Oh, yeah. We are heading to my house because somebody needs a diver's extension. Oh. And a link. Did you get me paid yet for these parts? Well, the other guy's going to cash app you or whatever. Oh, no. Just tell him to Venmo me directly. When uh, Grand Caliber needs parts and I don't have them at the shop, I definitely have them at my house. I sold a seed dweller to a client. I guess they didn't realize they didn't have a diver's extension. Yeah. So we're going to pull a diver's extension off one of the class that I have. And also need to check in on some Oyster Flex straps. I hope I still have because I don't know what happened to those. What else are we looking for? Links? Yeah, then we need a link. Yeah, so I think links. a hollow link for us up. I'm running low on those, man. Those are, those are getting popular lately. So we're here right now. Uh, Marco had a 16610 link that I needed and then the oh, seed dweller extension. Yeah, you need the whole extension. So I just want to show people where I live at. Okay, this is Marco's. I want to give a tour of Marco's balcony. So you come down, it's kind of thin. We got nice turf from the Cowboy Stadium. Jerry gave it to us personally. You got this view. So every morning, I like to think that Marco wakes up and comes out here and gives himself a pep talk. I know I would. So we are back at the uh, O'Rollies Parts Depot. So many bracelets. If anybody needs bracelets, I'm your guy. Oh my god. So these are my spare buckles. Let's see what we got here. That's the older style. Yeah, there you go. This is the one you need. No, no diver buckle. No diver buckle. Looks like we were robbed half of them. You mean? We mean? our last shot. All right, so this is the only one that I have with the diver's buckles. And this is a very expensive buckle. Why is that one more pricey, Marco? It's a 9315 buckle. Oh, that clears it up. What does that mean? <laughs> 9315. So you have two types of Submariner bracelets. It's a 93150, which are right now current market value of a 93150 is 1800 bucks for a nice clean one. And a 9315, okay, 9315, which is correct for red subs, sea dwellers. They're also correct for Submariners. Just 1680 like this. This came with the, you know, 9315. I have one that's in here somewhere. It's patented. It's They misspelled the word patented. It's noticed, you know, as a mistake by Rolex, of course, you know how that goes Rolex mistakes are very valuable so those are that's probably a five thousand dollar bracelet so the buckle on that ain't worth 350 bucks <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean let me keep digging dude I know I have one too like I've seen one loose somewhere I think he's gonna find the parts you need Jai. no I don't I mean <laughs> I don't. this is really frustrating I mean we're not overnighting it so if we get one shipped tomorrow technically we'll be that big ready so it looks like we're uh we're short this I don't have this I don't have it you don't have the links either oh the links yeah Jai, what link did you need uh, 14060. This segment sucks. What? Does it? <laughs> Since you don't have that, I'll take these links right here. Just no. for collateral. No. I'm just making a keychain out of those. Yeah. Yeah, right. Little gold keychain. I'm just robbing, uh, robbing parts off of my perfectly good bracelets to make this happen so you don't have to deal with any repercussions. So we got the diver's extension? Yeah. Let's go. Marco came through. I just didn't want to pull it off of a... I thought I had one loose. So there's your link. This is a good one. It looks stiff, Marco. It is stiff. It's never been used. There's the aftermath of a poor bracelet <laughs> that's just like sitting in the Rolex junkyard. Marco came through. We got the Sea Dweller extension. I bought this off a dealer or the Sea Dweller and it did not include this. So I'm not to bring it up to him that he owes me 350 bucks because... Did not disclose that. And then we needed a link. It was a 146 or a 14060 link. This will work, so we're happy about that. All good. Marco came through. I thought we were about to strike out, so. Uh, I'm 
I'm just very particular about how I give people parts. I want to make sure it's like perfect. And I hate and dramatic. You had me on the edge there. And I hate dismantling perfectly good bracelets. Well, I'll argue that it wasn't perfectly good because the end link's broken, but I feel like all I need is the right size end piece. Or I'm sorry, the right spring bar, and it works again. Why are you drinking at 4.34 p.m.? Because I don't drink coffee in the morning, because then I'll crash this late in the afternoon. But if I have a cup of coffee now, then by the time I crash, it's time for bed. It just makes sense. It's the gateway drug. I give it two weeks, and Jimmy's drinking all the coffee. Oh, Machines yes, too it advanced. did. It did make something. Where's the manual? Marco's the manual. I know. Where's Marco? He's the only one who knows how to work this thing. Okay, let's try a latte macchiato. Oh, this is strong. You're gonna like this, man. Okay. Oh, this <laughs> is strong. You're gonna, you're gonna like it. I guarantee it. Okay. Okay. Oh, this looks oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. Matt, this is gonna be good. I've been really hard at work on this fish tank out front. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see, the business update. We're preparing for the holidays, ramping up. So internally, I've been spending a lot of time looking at our website and really redeveloping our website. I'm super, super excited to launch it with you guys sometime here mid-November. The website itself won't look completely different. I mean, it's still gonna have a lot of the same theme, same pictures, same videos, but how you use that website is gonna be very different. How you check out how you can pay via wire, via crypto, via uh, credit card, how you you know consign a watch, sell a watch, and all of these different little things that we're working on. I learned so much about e-commerce. For all of those new entrepreneurs, anyone that have has a business, there's a lot that you wanna learn. What platform you start your website on is extremely important. There's closed end sources like Shopify, which are great for smaller businesses or very simple businesses, but I think we've outgrown Shopify. Then you start getting into things like big commerce, which is more of an engine that's open source, allows you to bring in things like different merchant service providers, customize things a lot more. And then there's bigger enterprises that use like Magento. So really understanding which platform you're on is really crucial. And we spent a lot of time this week figuring that out. Also did a lot of interviews. I am so excited of the talent that we've been able to interview. I mean, we've interviewed people as high as uh, former, you know, Rolex members who spent five, six years at Rolex, other luxury watch brands. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, they won't be coming on board, not because they're not interested, but we cannot provide the salary that they command. Those reps are likely three, four hundred thousand dollars or more. It is exciting that people now are actually interested in the brand where they're willing to interview and actually have the discussion. And hopefully the goal down the road in four or five years or, or maybe sooner, we can afford someone of that caliber. You know, we appreciate everyone that's interviewed. We were finalizing, you know, the last few, but it was really exciting to talk to someone that's been at Rolex for a long time, been at Patek for a long time. It's just nice to be able to attract that type of talent, even though we can't financially afford them at this moment in time. It's just nice that people are starting to think about us. Hopefully we'll have a sales manager by the end of this year full steam ahead in terms of the sales team they're working hard answering leads i know there's a lot of people out there that's reached out to grant caliber and sometimes you get great service and sometimes you don't hear from us i'm over here sitting and talking about customer service and why we should focus on customer service and it's frustrating when people that want to work with us reach out and don't hear from us sometimes that's the crm that we're on just not assigning the leads and delegating it out sometimes it just doesn't even show up on the sales reps phones or computers some of it is the sales team needing to do a better job. Some of it is the technology, the CRM that's in place. I think Salesforce is gonna solve a lot of that, but I've been promised that it was gonna happen a month and a half ago. Now I've been reassured that we're gonna test it starting next week, so I'm hopeful with that. But it's been a lot of behind the scenes um, operationally building the foundation. If you guys have any questions or curious on what we're working on, comment below. Like I said, I would like to do more of an ask us anything on that, but I just don't know if there's a demand for it. So let us know in the comments below. All right guys, so we're gonna go to Woven real quick. They, uh, they have a client that wants to look at a watch or they're looking for a watch that we just happen to have. So I'm gonna go over there and drop it off and see if we can't move it and see what those guys have been up to. I haven't talked to Josh in a minute. I cannot see around that camera. No <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's like blocking the entire view. By the way, Dallas drivers absolutely suck. Dallas drivers suck as he generously waves you in. <laughs> hey dude. Hey, what's up? I had some watches I wanted to sell you, man. I just can't recall what they were. This morning you sent me a picture of a limited edition Hublot Big Bang Unicorn. Yeah, do you want to buy that? Bro, I... 
I would give you a number for that, but my bro, those watches, the comp phones are stupid high, so if you probably piss off the client. No, just literally give me a number. I don't care. I don't listen. When it comes to Hublots, when it comes to Hublots, I do not care what the client feels. I'm sorry. I love all of them equally. It's just when it comes to Hublot, they have to understand it. Those are the barking dogs of the industry like i can't yeah i don't know i just for me personally i don't have like if, if somebody like bought i know they bought the watch for like 35k i don't have the balls to tell them like hey i pay like 9k for it i mean dude i'm pretty sure at this point they kind of know what's up man i mean it is what that's it the is. one that's been sitting in consignment for months right yeah the blue one send me a picture of it in the box is it just like the limited colorway or is it like like the uh, manchester united edition or the, FIFA, uh, the F1. You've seen it in my inventory. We've had it since March. Oh, so it's on your website right now? Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm done. We're going to drop off this Calatrava. I haven't been here in a while, so I kind of want to see what kind of inventory they have. Maybe I'll snag something. What up? Give it to him. It's for him. Do not drop or something like that. Yeah, hopefully we don't like to drop these. <laughs> I may have this sold. Somebody called me looking for this watch today. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a good price. What do you guys think? What do you guys ask? No? All I ask is do not unwrap the watch. Because the client that, that brought this is like really particular about the watch being clean. So it's like, it's got plastic wrap on it. I guess it's like, I don't know what, what um, how you guys feel about that sale, but if you think he's gonna like likely take it or is this kind of like a- He's interested, he wants to trade, he wants to trade in a watch. How much you want for this? What is it? It's a mint. That one's on like consignment. Don't let me leave empty handed, boys. Let's, let's get some. Do you have Bro, a brand new one panda, of these? Dude. Do you have a brand new one of these? That's a good price on that panda. 31? Yes. It's 2022. The only reason I want to sell it is because we have two others and I have one coming in. Oh. Uh, you know short people can't here, shop here, right? Because you put all the watches uh, so up high. Any of these Daytonas I can buy? No. Two of them have sold already. Which one? The John Mayer and the Panda Dial. Dude, you gotta tell me where to get these gloves. These are like literally the nicest gloves. Like just the way this glove fits your hand, it's like seamless. Oh bro, you're, we're about to get hit. Why? Who's that? You think that is? Hey! So, we're just to Funny seeing you out. here. The boss okay. man over there. Let's hey, go. let me grab this call, but yeah. Oh, I yeah. heard you, uh, you know, the picture of you with the signs getting some, some flack on social media. Uh, some flack, dude. People love it. People say, you know, this guy's a uh, oh, okay. tool. Okay. That's what I heard. Uh, well, how do you respond to critics like that? <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing is I am a tool. And so as a result, you know, call it like you see it. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> getting really close to my face. <laughs> it's a sign that says we do not wear consignment watches. It's kind of like a like the sign guy type thing. So we thought it'd be funny. It was a joke at first. Like we wrote it out as a joke, and it was like we might as well take a photo of it and put it on. I don't know. People got a kick out. Do you keep up with the haters? There's just too many of them. For me in particular, I can't. Uh, I can't keep up. They have so much inventory. They got matching watches. This is the his and hers. Oh, we got two of those. Huh? <laughs> They're a like combo. I don't think you have any haters, do you? Appreciate it. Me, I got a bunch of haters, man. What? Who could hate on Jimmy? I just come to keep an eye on, on this guy. You know? Yeah. We got a client, man. Yeah, we got a client. We got a dip. We got a client. First client in a long time, right? You run, Marco, run. You don't want me to run. Because we'll get there quick. <laughs> Who made this coffee? Because this shit was good. Oh, we got a new coffee machine. It's amazing what, what a... Uh, $5,000 coffee machine can do. Regardless, welcome back to another authentication video. And today we've got some interesting pieces in. Quick uh, wrist check. I personally bought this 1680 pumpkin unpolished. It's an absolutely, probably the best condition I've ever owned a 1680 in. The only thing that's wrong with it is the bracelet did break down the middle. So I'm getting that repaired, uh, but it also has a very, very rare bracelet uh, with it. So anyways, moving on, the first watch just came in for stock. So it is not a sold order. It is something that I brought in. It is a 18038 president. And it's actually in really, really good shape. It's got box and papers. I mean, this is technically an incorrect box. I will put the right box with this watch. But as you can see, one thing we look for when we have a president come in of the older variate variants is we want to check the bracelet stretch. So that's something that, you know, if you ever come across somebody buying or selling a president to you or from you, one thing you do want to show them, and it's very important, is how how is that band stretched? Because over the years, I have some seen some of these things hang on by the pens for dear life, and I have seen some of them where they just still remain like that. Just a quick Luminova check, sure, you know, looks like it does have some service hands that you're not treating them. Yeah, they're still glowing. So those are replacement hands, not a big deal. Wow, that's a really pretty doll. I think it actually was silver that's kind of moving along to a goldish color. 
It's kind of reverse from what I'm used to seeing, but it's really pretty. This watch is definitely unpolished, which is cool. Really, really nice shape. Also, another thing we do when we get these older presidents is you want to count the amount of screws it has. It should have seven total on a 18038. The later 18238 picked up an extra link, so they got eight screws total. This one is five, so it's short too. Should we see how this is running? Yeah, yeah. If you guys ever come across one of these machines and you own one of these, first thing you want to do is make sure the, wa the watch is fully wound up. Do not test this thing by shaking it and putting it on. I will, sh I will demonstrate what that looks like. You will not get a good reading at all. You gotta wind this thing 30, 40 times. So what this is gonna do immediately, it's gonna pick up the beat rate. It's gonna be 28.8. Very nice amplitude. We've got beat air is really good. Parameters look really good. So plus nine seconds. I know you guys probably don't want to hear that. But. This is dial up position. That is the one, you know, this is basically the position you would be at at work. Dial up, it's running a little fast. I like seeing fast more than slow. Fast just means we can regulate that. It's not typically a big deal. It's an older watch running fast. Just, you know, that's good news for us. We don't want to see something running to the point where we're like gonna need a big service. Cool, next watch. Let's go something modern. We did vintage, right? So let's let's split it up. I want to find a watch that's not running because I just want to shake it and put it on this time graph to show you guys what a brand new Rolex is gonna look like. Let's just see what this does. This I don't know if this has been wound. I don't know how long it's been traveling for, but man, they really wrap this thing. They wrap this thing top to bottom, front side to side. There's no complaints here. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Yeah, the dealers out there shipping like this because if it comes scratched, it definitely didn't happen on their end. This is brand new for sure. Oh, wow, this thing is fully stickered. Okay, except for the side, I don't see a barcode. I'm having to check for a refinish through plastic, so bear with me. This isn't something I typically do. I don't want to unwrap it. This watch looks good. It's a 126331 chocolate dial stick. Beautiful watch, absolutely great contrast with this piece. You know, rose gold and chocolate is just a complete mar happy marriage. You'll never see another combo to, in my eyes that's gonna look better with rose gold and brown. I mean, rose gold and green solid, yes, obviously that's a very sexy combination. However, for a daily watch, this just speaks volumes on the wrist. This watch right here is something I would actually wear. It gives me tropical vibes even though it wasn't born that way. You know, it was born brown, it wasn't, you know, earned brown. Don't get this watch with the diamond dial, guys. Just get it straight stick, be, be normal, don't be too flashy with it, you know, but if you want a diamond dial, you know who to call. So what's um, the verdict on the surface finish? Has it been polished? Ah, you tell me. Here, yeah. do the camera. Yeah, when Marco's sick, I'll hook it up. Yeah, if I'm ever sick and down for the count, then this guy's gonna be out of here authenticating watches. <laughs> What do you think? Yeah, I see the case stickers. The, the case, the, the head hasn't been polished for no, sure. No, obviously not, no. And the bracelet. Just look at the clasp. Just the clasp? Yeah, I mean, look at the clasp. I mean, that's like the number one area yeah. that polished guys always mess up. Crispy. So it is brand new. So there it is, unpolished. So we're two watches in. So just to recap on this 18038, I forgot to show you guys. It has two Rolex papers. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, they gave me the job to figure out which one's which. You can't beat that smell. No, you can't. God, smell that. That is... Yeah. Smells like an old folks home. So we got a 6.1 million piece of paper and now we got another guaranteed paper. Oh, ho, ho, I just hit the lottery. Check this out, guys. Open papers. And these... I am very happy about this. It's really, really rare to find these unassigned, especially vintage. And it also has that silly ass sticker that says, this guarantee does not detract from your rights under sales of goods legislation. If anybody knows what that means, just drop me a clue in the comments. Like, what are they talking about? While we're at it, guys, let's pop the bracelet off. Let's make sure they match. It's also kind of sad when I, <laughs> when I get watches like this and you see things like this. Somebody did not cherish this watch the way it should. It's clearly a gift. It says, to my friend, love Rebecca. So Rebecca, I'm sorry your friend sold the watch and somehow now it's in <laughs> my possession. It happens, I'm sure he still loves you or who knows, I don't know what happened there. All right, 617, all right, let's see if we're matching. I guess we can look at the back of this. 619, oh no. 6173956. If I'm not mistaken, these papers don't match this watch. But we have open papers. We can just take a pen and paper and just kind of just go ahead and start writing the numbers in. For the viewers, that's perfectly acceptable, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't go around doing that, that is bullshit. That's why I don't like uh, handwritten papers. I've never liked handwritten papers. We really don't count them when we're buying vintage. If you throw handwritten papers at me, I'm like, cool, thanks for the piece of paper. So this don't match, I will call the seller and gripe at him. And we'll move from there. I don't know if I'll keep it. 
maybe he'll discount it a little bit. All right, next watch. Explorer 2, this is the old reference, 216570, but I'm gonna show you guys something. So as you guys notice, it is not running. But if I just do this, which when I first got into watches, this is the way people taught me to start your automatic watch. I just shake it and it'll start running and it'll be good to go. So it's running, so let's see how it runs, just simply being shaken up. <laughs> Okay, so if I was a watchmaker right now and I didn't check the mainspring to see if it was fully wound, this is an absolute nightmare of a situation. This thing needs a full overhaul. Just to show you guys how important it is to wind your watches all the way up. Look at this. So we're gonna see it's negative 62 seconds. This is a pretty modern watch. I don't think this watch really has that type of problem. All right, so let's check it out. We're gonna wind it up. Let's wind it 30 times. Now it's about 30 winds, okay? We're gonna go ahead and put it back. What do you know? Winding your watch is gonna give you a much better performance than just shaking it and saying it's perpetual motion or whatever it is that people believe. We're at minus one second. You guys know how I like to find dust on dial, right? This is literally beachfront property on this dial. There is so much freaking sand on this dial, it's insane. There's just dust on dust on dust. Green shit all over it, waviness in the case. Oh, the crystal's all messed up. You know what, this may have came in for a service. Man, this dial actually needs to be replaced. This is too nice of a watch not to replace the dial. So the outer edges of the dial are becoming discolored heavily. It looks like it's over oiled by the previous watchmaker. Whenever you have over oiling issues, it tends to bleed out onto the edges of the dial and then it bleeds its way into the center. I mean, this is bad. I mean, I, I really wish you guys could see what I see. We gotta get something like going mad. Well, it's coming. We gotta show the viewers what I see. They're gonna learn a lot more from this. But since this needs to be serviced, it's gonna get opened up anyways. So we might as well just pop it. Oh my God. I don't even need the tool. Correct 3187. Even the movement's covered in dust. My God. Okay, next watch. This was not an easy watch to find. Uh, I know David out there was uh, watching and showing interest in buying a 5513 from me, and it took me a lot to find this watch, but I spent probably a good seven to nine days in a row hunting, but we finally found a decent one for his price point. 5513 meters first, and what that simply means is on the later variants of this watch, the feet would come before the meter, so it would say 660 feet, then 200 meters. But before that, uh, European market was much stronger back in those days, in the you know, mid-60s, so you would see the meters first, then the feet. But this one I did, I was already aware of a little bit of an issue with the dial, but it's really not too, too big of a deal. I actually missed this watch from the private seller. They bought the watch, then I had to buy it from them. I was a little late to the show. Hey, okay, still got some case chamfers there. By the way, shout out to Rolex for adding chamfers back on the titanium deep sea that they just released. I hope to see more chamfers back on their watches because that just looks so much better. I'm sorry. Don't reserve the chamfers for the freaking Tudors, please. Give it back to the Rolexes where they belong. There's a little chipping on the edge at the 12 and the six, but it's something I made my client aware of and he was okay with it because it's not very much. But yeah, everything looks correct. Cool, I like it. Plus five, that is great. That is really, really good for a 5513. All right, so there you go. That's a 5513 meters first. Typical price point on these watch in this market is between anywhere between 15 to 18,000, depending on condition. Full sets are gonna run low 20s. I've seen some really nice examples out there in the market. If you guys are interested in the meters first, reach out. I'm happy to help you locate one because they're not easy to find. And I had to track a lot of them down. I already did a lot of the legwork. So if you guys out there wanna find one, I know where a few good ones are. I'll show you guys something cool. I just bought this on a whim because I fit I get access all the time. Do you have bracelets for sale? And now I can safely say I do have a bracelet for sale, but it is uh, wrapped by Spider-Man himself. My God. This is a brand new unused Pepsi or Batgirl bracelet. I get asked for this a lot, so I figured why not have one in stock ready to go. It is nice, clean, brand new, never sized, never worn. So yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna price it at three grand if anybody needs it. And one more watch. It's a big box. This is a 2020 2620600 Red letter seed well, 43 millimeter. This is a fantastic watch for the money. I think this is a, you know, obviously a modern red sub in a sense, but red seed weller. They could have gone double red. I mean, that would have been kind of cool. We're gonna check this watch out, make sure everything is as described. This is a pre-owned watch, so I'm not expecting it to be new. It looks like it has an aftermarket sticker kit. When did that come into play, people getting into that? When um, the I scratched my bluesy crowd started really complaining online and 
some guy saw a case use for external stickers. I mean, guys, these watches were purpose built. They're not built to just look pretty in a box all day. Still has some factory stickers too, so it's it's kind of got them. It's in great shape. I don't see any signs of refinish. Bezel looks clean, no scratches, no cracks. Crystal looks good. Somebody took very good care of this watch. I mean, you can tell. This is gonna be an end to the segment. I hope you guys really enjoyed the authentication segment. If you guys are really enjoying the segment, you guys wanna see it stay around, please drop a comment below. Let me know that you guys are enjoying this and we will keep it going. We're going to fine tune this segment, guys. I promise you it's only gonna get better. And the reason being is because Matt apparently has something in the works to make this better because I actually really want to teach you guys what I see. I think if I can show you guys what I see and explain to you what I'm actually seeing, then you guys will actually be able to follow along and start understanding when things are aftermarket, why are they aftermarket, or versus why is a you know watch corroded a certain way. Regardless, stay tuned. We're only going to make this segment better. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.